Hey guys, today we are going to look at scatter plots. We're going to answer the question, what are the different types of scatter plots and how can I use scatter plots to make predictions? So scatter plots are graphs that use points to show the data between two variables or bivariate data. And we have three types of associations. The first is a positive association where it's going up as one variable increases, the other one does too. And then in a negative association, we have one variable that's increasing while the other one is decreasing and it's a graph that's going down. So one will be going up while the other one's going down, that creates a negative association. And then a no association graph is when there's no relation or association observed. So to make predictions, if there is an association, we can use a trend line to make predictions. Then we will write the equation of the line of best fitter trend line in slope intercept form, and then we can use that equation to make predictions. So let's look at this first one. It says the graph shows the number of baskets Jimmy made when he was a certain amount of feet away from the hoop. And they want us to write the equation for the line of best fit. So first thing I need to do is draw my line of best fit. So you want it to go the same direction as your data and have about as many points above the line as you do below. And it might take a couple of times. You wanna try to be accurate with your trend line since we're gonna use this to make predictions. Okay, now we want to write the equation of this line in slope intercept form. And as you can see, I cannot tell exactly what the y intercept is gonna be. So I'm gonna choose two points from the line and then we'll find the slope and then use that to find the y intercept. So it looks like I went through a point right here and about right here as well. So we might have different trend line equations today depending on how you drew your trend line. Tomorrow we will look at how to do this with a graphing calculator to make it accurate. For today, we're just gonna be as accurate as possible as we can, but we might be a little bit different since we're doing it by hand. Okay, so those two points that I got were four, eight, and 12, three. So the first thing that I want to do is find the slope. So I'm gonna label x1, y1, x2, and y2, and plug into slope formula. So it'll be three minus eight all over 12 minus four, which is negative five over eight. So I have my slope and then I have two points. I'm gonna use the first point four, eight, and I'm gonna write it in point slope form and then I'll convert it to slope intercept form. So it'll be y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So y minus eight equals negative five eighths times x minus four. So y minus eight equals negative five eighths x. And then I'm gonna do negative five eighths times negative four in the calculator. That becomes 2.5. So plus 2.5. And then I'm going to add eight and I get y equals negative five eighths x and then 2.5 plus eight is 10.5. So there is the equation for the line of best fit, y equals negative five eighths x plus 10.5. And then part B says, what is the best prediction for the distance Jimmy was from the hoop if he made three baskets? So they want us to figure out how far he was from the hoop, which is X, if he made three baskets. So they gave us Y. The three baskets is Y. So I'm going to replace Y in the equation with three, and then I'll solve for X, which will tell me how far he was from the hoop. So I'm going to subtract 10.5, 
and 3 minus 10.5 is negative 7.5. So I get negative 7.5 equals negative 5 eighths x. And now I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, negative 8 fifths. So x will equal negative 8 fifths times negative 7.5. So that means he would be about 12 feet from the hoop. Let's make sure that makes sense. If he made three baskets, based on our trend line, it looks like he would be 12 feet from the hoop. All right, let's look at number two. It says the graph shows the average number of hours a group of 13 middle schoolers watches Netflix and sleeps. So it wants us to write an equation for the line of best fit. So I'm gonna draw my trend line and then write a, my equation just like I did on the first one. So make sure it's going the same direction as your data and you have about the same number of points above as you do below. I'm gonna try one more time. Okay, that looks a little bit better to me. So I see a point there and I see a point there. Your, my, your points might be a little bit different. They should be similar though. So I'm gonna use these two points to write my equation now. The points are three, eight, and six, four. And I'm going to label them x1, y1, x2, and y2, and I'm gonna find the slope. So it would be four minus eight all over six minus three, which is negative four all over three. Six minus three is three. So the slope is negative four thirds. And now I'm gonna use this slope that I found and I'll just use the first point to write my equation in point slope form and then we'll convert it to slope intercept form. So point slope form is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So it'll be y minus eight equals negative four thirds times x minus three. So y minus eight equals negative four thirds x and then negative four thirds times negative three is positive four. And then I'm going to add eight and I get y equals negative four thirds x plus 12. So the equation for the line of best fit is y equals negative four thirds x plus 12. Then it says, what is the best prediction for the number of hours a middle schooler would watch Netflix if they sleep for eight hours? So let's look at the graph. They gave us the hours of sleep, which is X, and they want us to use it to find how many hours they watched Netflix, which is Y. So I'm going to substitute eight hours in for X, and I will use it to find Y. So Y will be negative four thirds times eight plus 12 negative four thirds times eight plus 12 is 1.3 repeating. So if they watched eight hours of Netflix, that would mean they sleep for about 1.3 hours. All right, last one, number three, says the data in the table shows the number of miles driven in a road trip after a certain number of hours. Graph the data in the table, and then we're going to write an equation and use it to predict. So let's go ahead and graph this. After one hour, they've driven 62 miles. So about right there. Two hours is 118. Three hours is 175 four hours is 245, and then five hours is 305. 
and then I'm going to draw my line. Okay, so this data is pretty linear. I don't really have any outliers here. So what I'm gonna do is just choose two points from the table and then use those to write the equation. And I'm gonna choose two that it looks like my line is going through best, which would be this first point and this point right here. So I'm gonna use the point 162 and 4, 245 to write my equation in slope intercept form. So this would be x1, y1, x2, y2. So now I need to find the slope by doing y2 minus y1, which would be 245 minus 62. all over four minus one. So 245 minus 62 is 183, and then 183 over three is 61. So the slope is 61. And now I need to write the equation in slope intercept form. So I'm gonna start with point slope form and convert it. And I'm just gonna use the first point to write it in point slope form. So it'd be y minus 62 equals 61 times x minus one. I distribute and I get y minus 62 equals 61 x minus 61 and then I add 62 and I get y equals 61 x plus one. So the equation to show the trip would be y equals 61 x plus one. And then part B says, what is the best prediction of the number of hours driven if someone has traveled 415 miles? So the number of miles is y, that's on the y-axis. We're gonna plug that in for y, and then that will tell us the number of hours, x. So y equals 415. I replace y with 415. And now I solve for x. So I subtract one, and that would be 414 equals 61x, then divide by 61 and 414 divided by 61 is about 6.8 hours.